All right. So uh, injury-wise, you know, I mean, I think we're in fairly good shape. We were limited with Sony yesterday. Um, I think he'll probably be limited again today, even though today is, uh, you know, we, we kind of tailor it back in terms of the, the intensity on, on Fridays. But for the uh, logistics of it, he'll probably be listed for limited. But, you know, talking to him this morning and going through meetings, I think he's feeling good. Um, expect him to be able to play. He was sick, yeah. He, he got sick yesterday, just a little stomach bug. Uh, he's back today. He is. Who fills Johnny Munt's role? You know, there's a couple guys that are candidates. You know, you look at Bryson Hopkins. You look at Kendall Blanton. You know, those are the other guys. Jacob Harris is a guy that that could fulfill that. And so I think it really depends on the personnel package. Um, But but those are the three guys that would, would be candidates for that, Gary. I think those guys have more experience, you know, playing where you're talking about that legitimate tight end where you're closing the formation, Jordan. Um, But again, you know, there's some different things that you can do to, you know, create those closed looks. And he's still got enough athleticism and toughness to be able to secure backside edges. But as far as just playing an inline tight end, those guys are, are more likely candidates in that role. There's a possibility of that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, hey, how you doing? There's, I'm not, I don't really come out until, you know, fairly late anyways. And, and you know, you, you definitely talk to guys and, and say hello. But, um, you know, it's a little bit different, especially with players. They're going through warm-ups and they're getting into their routine and, and rhythm and, and getting ready to play. Sometimes you might talk to the opposing coach a little bit more. But I think like anything else, when you see opposing players and then after the game is usually when you get a chance if you, if you want to catch up. But sometimes those things are better off, you know, where you have a relationship where it's not a – Hey, what's Sean and Jared going to do? Because Gary's looking right now, you know. Uh, I know you will. (laughs) There you go. That's right. Whew, that's, uh, you know, I think really it's, it's all part of just the, the influences, the people that I've been around, you know, certainly a lot of all the stuff that you're seeing us run. Um, it's all from things that I learned from other people. And so, shoot, I, I, you know, I can remember even when you start really, you know, we've always motioned, whether it was when I'm learning from, you know, Coach Gruden when I started out or Coach Shanahan. And, and then you really talk about establishing a foundational system with how you want to operate. But as far as, you know, some of the things with the jet motion that's become increasingly more prevalent really around the league, you can see that with college. And then I'll tell you what had a huge influence on me is when you're coming here and you're studying the ways that I thought they did a great job utilizing Tavon Austin. Jet sweeps, different things like that. And it was something that we dabbled with a little bit my first year when Tavon was a part of it. Um, and we really just expanded upon it because we felt like you, you, you could see the conflict that it put defenses in. Um, we have a lot of different guys that were candidates that you felt more than comfortable handing them the ball. You know, really all of our receivers, we've given jet sweeps to tight ends. So um, it just became something that became more prevalent. You study it. You try to have an understanding of, all right, what's the intent of this play and how can you utilize it to try to create numbers, change the math, give yourself better angles uh, from an offensive perspective when you're attacking the 11 guys on defense. So it's kind of been an evolving and ongoing thing, but um, it, there's always an intent behind it. It's not just to look cool. And then a couple of guys have chuckled over the years with some of the things that maybe you guys have tried to install that just Oh, yeah. Illustrate. That happens a lot. Yeah. Usually I'm delirious or I have way too many coffees, you know, it's, Hey guys, this is either genius or some dumb stuff. And, uh, usually it fall, you know, it's, it'll be a cool idea or it's really dumb. And, uh, there's a lot more dumb than there are cool ideas probably coming from me on some of those things. But there's been a lot of those head scratchers that it, you think about it, it's going to look better. And then it definitely doesn't elicit the response from the defense or get the intent that you desire. That's why you practice. Yeah, it'd be a lot. You know, our our defensive guys are very imposing figures, uh, whether it's Leonard, Aaron, 
when Jalen's just looking at you, whether he's an outside corner or an inside player, you know, you're like, man, you don't even want to make eye contact with him. So we got a lot of guys, and, and I think they're playing really well. I, I, I think um, they've had a great energy this week. I thought last week's energy was reflective of the way that they played. Confidence, like we've talked about, man, it's a powerful thing in sports. You want to build on that momentum. I think these guys have done a great job of kind of capturing that, bottling it up with the energy they've had this week. I want to see that translate to, to game day on Sunday, and, that, and that's what I expect. You're talking about with Leonard in particular? Oh, yeah, Silent Assassin? Yeah. yeah. You heard, like, I heard this, you see about, like, Julius Peppers, for example. I mean, I know a different situation, but, like, when you're that, like, giant of a figure, but you don't say anything, yeah. and you just, it, it, you used to hear that it used to just, like, sort of end with the quarterback line. Oh, oh, yeah, I believe that, you know, and I think, um, you know, those guys would be better equipped to, to, to answer that. I think it's really whatever is in these guys' natural personality. And some guys, they don't say much. They just go about their work, and it can definitely wig you out a little bit more than anything else. And then I've seen some guys that can definitely get in people's head by talking a lot of stuff too. So it's, uh, it goes both ways. I think it's whatever's true to guys' personalities. Rams-Lions week. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's unique. I, I think what what I understand, Kevin, is that you guys have to talk about it and you have to ask about it. And, you know, there's relationships on that other sideline, whether it be with Jared, Michael Brockers, Aubrey Pleasance, a really close friend of mine who's doing, who's a great coach who's there playing an instrumental role and a lot of good things that you're seeing on the defensive side. And so it's more consistent, you know, to have this stuff come up. But when you're talking about the prevalent, you know, how prominent these positions are with the quarterbacks and the trade having occurred this past off season, I understand that. But, you know, really, I think our team has done a really good job of preparing. There's some familiarity with those guys in particular, but they have familiarity with us. So it kind of goes both ways. But once it's kicked off, um, it's about a normal game. Um, we're trying to go get our sixth win and, and play really well in all three phases, build on some of the things that we've done. And I know they're, they're trying to you know, do the same thing. And so that's, that's really what it is. Um, you know, if you ask about Matthew, I've seen a steady, consistent approach just like the other weeks. Um, I thought, you know, when he talked to you guys earlier this week, I thought it was as authentic, honest, and genuine, and that's who he is. There's a lot of special memories he's had, a lot of people that are very important, but there is a lot of turnover. might be a little bit different if we were going back to Detroit as well and the game wasn't in L.A. So um, I don't want to speak for him, but, but I've seen a really steady, consistent um, competitor and a guy that approaches his work with that same mindset and mentality that I think, bless you, that's led to him playing really well through these six weeks and expect them to have another good performance, but, but he understands their personnel and, and knows they have some really good players. Well, there was a lot of standout memories. Um, I was exhausted. I mean, that, that whole week was crazy. We're, we're in, um, you know, Colorado Springs training, all that kind of stuff. I mean, certainly Gerald Everett down the right sidelines, you know, re resonates with me. Marcus Peters getting a pick. Uh, LaMarcus Joyner finishing that game off. So um, Samson had a great game, a couple forced fumbles, Aaron. So, I mean, that, there's the, you could talk about that game for years. There's, that, was, uh, <laughs> that was a fun one. What makes you ask about that game? Wondering if uh, actually there's a reason. Okay. Well, um, you know, as a if you're involved in the defense, you certainly hope not. Offensively, you know, those are fun to watch. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I was I enjoyed when we had a, our mini buy, really watching a great back and forth battle between the Chargers and Browns a couple weeks ago. That was a a great high scoring affair, a, a track meet, as Brandon would uh, would would call it. But that was um, I don't know. I've never really thought about it like that. It was fun though. That was a fun night. Exhausting though. I think that's his best trait, Jordan. I think he's got a great way of authentically connecting and, and really knowing how to reach guys. And, and I think that's a special trait of any great leader, any great coach, and certainly Raheem checks all the boxes there. And so even for me, he's been a good influence on me, you know, just knowing when to push the right buttons as far as telling me what I need to hear, not what I want to hear, watching how he's got a great way, Jordan, of being able to coach guys 
but it's not ever condemning them, but it's being demanding and correcting, but it disarms guys because they know he cares about them, but he does it in a very real, hey, this is a very straightforward, I'm going to keep it real with you, this is what we need to do, but he's correcting the issue, not the person, and guys receive that really well, but I also think he does a great way, he's, he's really naturally a funny guy, so he's got a great way of kind of softening some of those points with humor and that's who he's always been. I've, I, I've, I've known Raheem for a long time. I've yet to see him have a bad day. Um, I wish I had that ability that he has to just be so steady, so consistent, to not let little things bother him, um, and he can move on. He's a mentally tough guy, and he's a, he's a great guy that just has a great you know, emotional intelligence and ability to connect with people, and that's one of his greatest traits. I'm really fortunate to be working with him, and it's great being connected back with Raheem. <laughs> uh, Dante Dion, yep. um, how would you describe what you've seen from him uh, you know, that the public has generally not seen? He's, he's been well, if you watch Hard Knocks, you saw a lot of him. Um, you know, he's, he's a guy that um, he's got a great personality, really charismatic, incredibly intelligent guy. Again, similar to Raheem, he's naturally funny, but you know everybody. If you don't like Double D and you don't like Raheem, something's wrong with you. And so these are very likable guys that have a natural way of connecting with, you know, all types of people. But he's an incredibly intelligent player. I think he's 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 pretty he's very talented. He's got great short space quickness. He played really well last week, and expect him to improve on that performance. And so. I've uh, been really happy for him. He's a great positive, uh, you know, story for continuing to work, overcome some things, whether it be the size or, you know, you're like, oh, can he really play? And then he gets his opportunity, and to his credit, he capitalized on it. And I think you're going to see him have more opportunities as we move forward. Okay? Thanks, guys.